Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiral Dadia. We have with us Mr. Soma Sundaram, PRMT at India World Gold Council joining in. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the show, Mr. Soma Sundaram, and a pleasure to speak to you as always. Uh, my first question coming to you overall is uh, the kind of commodity landscape that we've seen in the last couple of months. What is it that has actually been supporting this kind of a rally that we saw? Well, one of the things is uh, specific to gold I'm talking about is uh, the fact that uh, uh, you know the prices, uh, uh, the U.S. interest rates in particular, and the expectations of risk. You know, these were the two uh, very very important uh, factors. It drove up the price, as you know, it touched even two thousand um, uh, early part uh, of, uh, I mean, towards la- uh, the end of last year, and then it started softening. Uh, today, I think it is hovering between 1750 and 1850. It is range bound for the last couple of uh, weeks or months. And, uh, but there is always that undercurrent of the pressure building up because of excess liquidity, uh, the concern about the uh, monetary policies in various uh, uh, countries. But yeah. at the same time, currently, there seems to be a big appetite for risk assets like equities, which is one thing which is keeping gold in this range bound uh, price uh, Uh performance. But uh, uh, the clear answer is, yeah, um, you know, the the, uh, loose monetary policies, I wouldn't say do the relaxed policies and uh, the US interest rates. Uh, So these two are the factors which are, um, which are making gold perform the way it is. And it is supposed to perform this way because it is, uh, at the end of the day, known as uh, the safe haven. Mm. Right. So overall, right now, what's the kind of trend that you've seen with regards to where allocation is concerned? (laughs) Well, we have seen uh, a significant jump in ETFs last year. I mean, I'm talking about the calendar year. You know, we saw... um, uh, Visa inflows up up to 800 tons last year. In the current year, in the first half, of course, we did see an outflow, net outflow, although in quarter two, we saw an inflow. In quarter one, we saw a bigger outflow, which was made out by um, some inflows in quarter two. Uh, This is a June quarter. But overall, if you see, look at the ETFs, which kind of reflects what investors think about gold. There has been a significant jump in allocation. I mean, 2020 was one of the best years uh, since 2008 when we saw the financial crisis. So clearly, when uh, uh, things turn out to be what they were as in 2020, investors tend to move to gold Okay. as a safe haven asset. And we saw that absolutely performing. The second important thing is, look at how central banks have behaved. ETFs is one one, um, uh, specific thing. The other important factor to uh, note is how central banks have behaved. Central banks, again, have been consistent buyers of gold. And particularly so in this quarter, if you see, uh, you know, central bank buying has really gone up to, uh, 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 you know, levels that we have seen in 2018 and 19. So, and this is again without China and Russia, uh, you know, which are the two big uh, players. Now mm. they are out of the market, but still you saw various uh, central banks, including RBI, you know, collectively um, the uh, first half has seen almost close to 200 tons. Right. So with all of this, if you could just help me understand the last data that I was g- reading as well, wherein uh, it's the record outflow number that we've seen overall with regards to gold ETFs in FI22 so far. What's the reason for the same? Well, as you said, uh, you know, 2020, the gold price performance was excellent. And also the risk, the risk uh, appetite was very low. So therefore people, investors generally flocked to gold and ETF was, uh, uh, was the beneficiary of that. What happened in early 2021 was that you know economies opened up and you know we also saw vaccination pick up and the u.s yields again started going up you know it touched uh, uh, the treasury yields touched nearly 1.75 
so this combination of factors made uh, investors uh, certainly uh, some uh, investors who have uh, who have invested in ETF to move away from ETFs and go into risk based assets. Okay, so that was one of the reasons why we saw a big outflow in quarter one. Mm -hmm. Quarter two again we saw an inflow, but it is not it was not as high as it was in the last year. It was hardly ten percent of what we saw in twenty twenty quarter two. Mm -hmm. But still there was an inflow. But that inflow was not enough to make up for the outflow of the first quarter. Okay. So the outflow in the first quarter, which happened this year, was essentially a, a, a factor of the gold price performance uh, in the short run. So people tend to move when they see uh, a range brown uh, price performance, they tend to move out to other assets. Mm -hmm. That was the reason. Right. So with all of this, uh, you know, do you think the allocation that has gone up in terms of gold as an investment, uh, as a safe haven, is there a possibility that that will sustain uh, over time right now? Or do you think uh, once, you know, the pandemic is again receding now, the allocation towards gold as a safe haven is something which will start diminishing? Well, as you have seen the recent paper which we have let out, inflationary mm -hmm. expectations are coming back. All right. And gold has always performed well when inflationary expectations yes. are high. And, and we all know that, you know, every country has supported the economies in the last uh, nearly two years. It's going to be two years now with mm. surplus liquidity. And um, I don't think the economic performance is going to absorb all of this liquidity so easily. And while Fed is talking about, uh, uh, about uh, you know, taking it back, it is not going to be easy. You know, what happened between 2008 and 2020 itself is a lesson about how difficult it is once you have, uh, once you have um, followed uh, loose policies for a while. So given these situations, you will clearly see that gold as a safe haven will have a stronger position in the next couple of years. And you saw yesterday, uh, one of the uh, investors, big investors, Mark Mobius, has also said that Look, you should allocate, of course, he was talking more globally, 10% definitely should keep at least in gold because he, he sees um, currencies will get devalued further. So this is, and it, it reflects sentiments across uh, big investors as well. So in, our, in my view, I think therefore you will see gold's performance actually uh, getting a little stronger amongst investors as a portfolio diversifier in the years to come. But do you think there is a possibility that gold's weightage with regards to where the commodity indices are concerned, that could also increase going ahead from what it is now? Well, uh, it all depends on how the other factors play out. But yes, if you really look at what's happening around the globe, there is too much of uncertainty. It is very difficult to say uh, which policy is going to work and is the policy going to work across all countries you know, it's not simply about, yeah, if this policy has worked in the US or in, in Europe or in India or China. It's about many other countries as well. They are all part of the global system. So are they going to work? So uh, given so much of uncertainty, I think gold's uh, role will get enhanced. And therefore, uh, uh, my expectation is obviously very positive about gold playing a bigger role in the monetary system as we go along, uh, as, a, as a portfolio diversifier, and even as a mainstream asset, you know, digital forms of buying and selling gold are increasing uh, a lot, apart from ETFs and others. So you will see that this trend now gets accelerated. Mm -hmm. And gold, uh, again, as an as a important monetary asset, will probably play a bigger role than it did uh, between 2008 and 2019. The crisis, the first crisis uh, actually in 2008, the big crisis really brought gold back amongst investors. This crisis probably is going to catapult it into a, a much uh, bigger position. Mm. Right, and overall, how big a, a factor is the liquidity as an investment in terms of gold because uh, clearly, gold as an investment asset, the liquidity vis-a-vis -vis other commodities is way higher. So does that also play in as a factor to attract investments? Yes, it does. And uh, their ETFs have played a stellar role, if you look at uh, gold, because uh, while there is still always a lot of uh, scope to improve uh, 
you know uh, accessibility to gold and mm. also fungibility because it's still uh, you know it's uh, compare it with a dollar or any other currency gold still has uh, some issues but overall if you see etfs have played a very very good role in increasing the liquidity of gold clear for big investors um, <clears throat> And and uh, what's happening around the markets, including in India, for instance, the gold spot exchange is coming up. Uh, we are talking about the international bullion exchange, and mm. these are these developments also will certainly over time improve the liquidity of gold, improve fungibility of gold. So we are going to see the bullion market play a much bigger role in the monetary system as we go uh, into the future. Right. And overall, you know, do you think allocation in terms of investments uh, to gold is something uh, which is pretty much under right now? And the ones who have not really done this, I mean, the quantum which is required have probably missed the opportunity. Yes, uh, we have always uh, seen that. We have uh, we have uh, back tested many, many mm -hmm. portfolios. We have proved uh, in our case for gold in specific markets as well, including India that uh, when you have an allocation of gold, 10 to 15 percent, you know, uh, in various pension portfolios, those portfolios tend to, would have probably seen less volatility and greater uh, risk adjusted return. OK, right. and this this has been proved with data uh, the, of the past. So clearly, yes, uh, you need to you need to look at allocations, uh, you know, institutions which have been probably looked at gold as uh, seriously as they um, as, they, as they should have probably will return to look at now gold and what will help this process is also as i said various developments happening across the globe in making gold more liquid you know more accessible and uh, therein again i would point out uh, although it is closer home what is happening in india is also going to help us you know the exchange part uh, it's not that exchange overnight will change things what does it do? It is it is actually improving the bullion ecosystem. It's, oh, it's providing right. investors a very good uh, platform to buy and sell gold with ease, with integrity. So these things in the next few years will matter a lot more and bring in a lot more investors into bullion. Right. And, and if you could just help us understand, you know, usually when a retail investor looks at gold, it's somewhere... Uh, taken in in a very similar format to industrial metals. But however, gold does behave differently from industrial metals, uh, you know, in terms and most of the commodities in general. So how should one actually look at gold separately vis-a-vis -vis other commodities? Well, when it comes to gold, as you said, it is a quasi-currency. Unlike other uh, uh, commodities, yeah. it's a quasi-currency. You just it's not just about a price play. It's uh, it's uh, it is one of the uh, it's the only uh, commodity in a sense, if you can call it a commodity, which even central banks still have as part of the reserves. Right. So, uh, so gold has a very unique place in that sense because of its uh, legacy, you know, centuries old legacy across. While it is still worn as a jewelry, it is still seen as an investment, and uh, you uh, also have closer home I'm, I'm talking about, you can actually monetize gold in ways that you cannot do with other uh, commodities so easily. When you want a, a, a loan, you can actually take a gold, uh, you know, collateralize it and take money. It's not so easy with uh, any other commodity. So uh, that's what I said, you know, gold is a quasi-currency in that sense. So therefore, and this position cannot be just uh, removed, uh, displaced. Mm. So you, you will therefore see that the, what is happening as developments now with all the uh, things happening around the globe, uh, what is China doing? What's India doing? What's uh, you know London doing with this? What uh, so given that you will only see that this 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 uh, feature of gold as a currency, as a portfolio diversifier, is definitely going to be far stronger than other commodities. There is no doubt about it because it will take a long time. Uh, you have a gold ETF. Uh, you still are looking at, you know, is there a silver ETF in India? You know, is it possible to form it? But therefore, gold has this head start because it has been a currency in the past. So this is going to uh, uh, be an important thing to support gold. And uh, so I don't know whether I, I can answer that. You're, you're not going to be able to remove all these aspects and features of gold 
or you're not going to be able to build all these uh, with other commodities so easily. Right. And overall, how are you seeing the consumer demand? Is the recovery strong? Because at least in terms of where uh, the kind of Q1 outflows we saw, the demand recovery that we saw in the second quarter, you know, in terms of gold ETF inflows, they were not really enough to offset the heavy Q1 outflow that we saw. So how's the sense that you're picking up, you know, uh, from this quarter onwards as well? See, what is happening is gold has, a, again, this is a very unique uh, place where uh, uh, last year when the prices were sh shooting up, you know, consumers stayed away. When I say consumer, consumers of jewelry, bars and coins, they stayed away. Investors in ETFs, uh, they actually were driving the gold demand, right? Now, when gold price is actually range bound, and it also got softened a bit because of the interest rate movements and other aspects, what happened is investors are probably staying a little soft in their approach to gold, but consumers are coming back, consumers of jewelry. So that's the beauty of gold. And they also buy gold in jewelry form, but it is a form of investment. So right now, what we will we are seeing is, while the investment side is a little soft, uh, uh, you know, you will you are seeing the consumer uh, demand for jewelry, for bars and uh, for coins and things like that actually rising faster. And while I don't have the figures for this uh, September quarter, um, in our interactions, what we find is uh, most of the jewelry trade is reporting uh, very, very good activity, good engagement with the consumer. So you will probably see this, uh, therefore, uh, uh, offsetting the softness in the investment side. Right. Because, yeah. No, I get your point on this front. However, you know, one thing that we've noticed about gold is that usually, as we've spoken, that in the last couple of years as well, gold has certainly grown as an asset, you know. However, if you take the current year into consideration, gold is down by almost 9%. Now, you have real estate, which is up. You have equities, which have, has risen. And you have the dollar, which has risen. Now, what's surprising over here is that usually the dollar value generally moves in tandem with precious metals, wherein you have the dollar, which has grown by 3% already this year. So why this kind of differential that we are seeing right now? Well, as you know that uh, the current policies, liquidity, they do tend to uh, test some of the equations which we are used to in the past. Uh, you can't explain all that very clearly because uh, mm. uh, the current policies, as you can say, is also uh, something which has never been tested in the past. So in a sense, even the uh, authorities um, are obviously uh, using these policies and part of it is experimentation. They, they, there is a lot of hope that we will be able to come back to normalcy, but it's not normal period, all right? So in this, um, if you really look at it, equity markets are going up, correct? I mean, everywhere. Equity markets are rising faster than the economic growth. Uh, so in a normal period, you would think this is hugely risky. Mm. But you're still seeing that, you know, markets are going up and, uh, you know, testing new highs every day. Mm. I can't explain this so easily with, with uh, what we have already known all these years. But clearly we are saying that, look, uh, risk is increasing and appetite for risk assets are increasing. You know, it's, a, it's, it's an equation which we have not seen uh, earlier. Having said that, that is where gold comes in because, and that's where diversification plays a role because the more riskier the environment becomes through investments in, in riskier assets, the more the need for gold. And uh, gold right now is playing a very, uh, as I said, uh, it's range bound, it's static. There is nothing uh, moving uh, prices one way or the other. But that's where the beauty of gold lies in. You know, you just keep it as an insurance and uh, you are taking other uh, uh, portfolio measures. And at, at, uh, uh, in, a, in a sense, it is therefore, it's managing the risk in mm. a way. So uh, it's very difficult to explain why some of the, some of the equations which we, with which we have all seen the financial markets work, why they are not working now? Why, right. should, the, why should gold price be this and the equity markets be this? Mm. It's, it's a little difficult to say because um, the policies are now a little aggressive. 
liquidity is in uh, is driving more behavior than um, i would say a clear risk based assessment and investments right so is it is it right to say right now mr somasandaram that gold as an asset class it's pretty much undervalued as compared to the other financial asset categories well as i said yes uh, you know um, instead of going into what should be the value of gold mm. we always i mean as as world gold council we do give uh, as you know we don't forecast uh, what correct, gold will be but we do give tools uh, there is a tool called forum which we have developed uh, for those investors who are interested in knowing the intrinsic value of gold what it should be how it can play you can go in plug in your own estimates of uh, growth you know interest rates demand and have a, a site of what you think is the intrinsic value of gold and you can play around with it we also have measures ourselves suggested measures so this is available but uh, is gold undervalued i think it is um, as i said it all depends on the portfolio that uh, you have if and if you are overweight on gold it's it's one view you will take if you are uh, 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 if you have uh, risk based assets uh, then it's, it's another uh, uh, view you will take but uh, overall i will agree as a world gold council i will agree yes uh, i think gold um, as as we stand today it appears that it will play a far far stronger role in portfolios given the uncertainties we all face and it's not easy to say that these are all going to end in 12 months or 15 months right. it's so <laughs> uncertain therefore that's where gold plays a, a bigger role so i right. will leave it like that right. and my very last question coming to you is with regards to as an investment opportunity cryptocurrency is something which is picking up as well now do you think you know investors are probably even replacing gold with investments in cryptocurrency and that's one of the reasons which is getting allocation to gold down as an investment bet well as i said gold investment coming uh, uh, you know uh, bitcoin um affecting the price of gold is not a, is not a reality i mean it's not that people are removing from gold and going into bitcoin you know the, some liquidity certainly is going flowing into bitcoin gold and investments in gold are uh, actually a, a, a reflection of what happens to gold the etf the price band etc it's nothing to do with what's happening in bitcoin in fact bitcoin is one of the risk assets that people are allocating some uh, in um, part of the portfolio too and the more you have investments in such risky assets because when you put it in bitcoin your risk level always goes up you need more gold to neutralize the risk to balance the risk so it's not the equation is not gold versus bitcoin gold is a very very traditional asset class it has got uh, you know centuries of behavioral uh, data whereas when it comes to bitcoin it's very recent it's been very volatile it's um, you know we have seen the risks uh, there so uh, it's not like bitcoin has grown at the expense of gold no that is not at all the situation right i mean that's well put up as well thank you mr somasundaram so much for joining us on the show always a pleasure to get great insights from you and to understand this entire investment asset class as a whole uh, again once again thank you uh, congratulations as well and uh, good luck with your campaigns that are going on right now and stay safe and speak to you soon again thank you thank you subscribe to our youtube channel for in depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates